In this session, I will be discussing iron deficiency anemia. It's a very, very important topic from exam point of view. Many MCQs are coming from this topic in various competitive exams. So let's discuss iron deficiency anemia under the following headings. It's a very important topic. So I will be discussing all these headings under this uh, iron deficiency anemia. Let's start with the introduction. So iron deficiency anemia is the most common anemia in the world as well as in India. It is the most common anemia in the world also, in anemia also. It is more common in developing countries as compared to developed countries. Now for understanding the pathogenesis of iron deficiency anemia, it's important you must first understand the iron, normal iron metabolism in a healthy human being. So if you understand the normal iron metabolism, it will be easy for you to understand iron deficiency anemia, right? Now there are two types of iron, the heme and the non-heme. The heme iron present in the non-vegetarian diet that is meat and all. And the non-heme iron is present in the veg vegetarian diet like green leafy vegetables, the jaggery, you know. So all the iron containing food. Now, this is the flow chart. I would like to draw the diagram for you. Let me draw. Let me draw. Okay. So here I am drawing. So let me draw. This is the mouth. This is the esophagus. This is the stomach. And this is the intestine. Let me show you the intestine. I'm drawing the intestine widen, right? Now, whatever iron we take in diet, this iron, whether heme or non-heme, it is ferric. It is ferric. Ferric means Fe3 positive. So whatever we are taking in the diet, the vegetables, the uh, vegetarian, the non-vegetarian, it is going in the mouth. From the mouth, it is going in the esophagus. It is going in the stomach and it is going in the intestine. In the intestine, these are the cells of the intestine which will absorb the iron. Just behind it, we are having the blood vessel. Let me draw the blood vessel here. This is a blood vessel in the submucosa. We want to absorb the iron in the blood vessel so that it can reach the blood vessel. Now this iron will come in the intestine here. But the problem is that the intestinal cell will absorb only divalent molecules. That is ferrous. That is ferrous. So before absorbing the iron must convert from Fe3 positive to Fe2 positive. So basically this conversion is done by the HCl of the stomach. So the, in the stomach we have hydrochloric acid. We all know that. That hydrochloric acid convert Fe3 positive into Fe2 positive. You got my point. So we have to convert the ferric iron to ferrous iron. The trivalent to divalent. Then only it will get absorbed. So once it get converted. Uh, from uh, so uh, basically HCl is required so more is the HCl more is the conversion more, more will be the absorption so acid is required for iron absorption make a note of it right please understand so this Fe2 positive is ultimately formed so whatever I am eating in my diet whether veg whether non-veg the iron diet so it is going in my stomach in my stomach in my uh, HCl is converting the far ferric iron to ferrous iron the ferrous is moving to the intestine now in the intestine there are two transporters please mind it here what are the two transporters let me draw it the first transporter transporter present on here the luminal surface and the second is present on the basolateral surface the luminal surface is known as DMT transporter it is known as divalent metallic transporter as the name indicate it will absorb only divalent molecules not travelant that's why we have converted ferric to ferrous right now on the other side we are having another transporter which is known as ferropotin this one is ferropotin you got it so here the ferrous iron will first uh, the divalent metallic transporter will take the iron from the lumen into the cell and from the cell, from the anthrocyte, the ferropotin again take it from the cell to the blood. So ultimately the iron will reach here in the blood. But the ferropotin again oxidize the iron from ferrous to ferric. So ultimately in the blood it's ferric only. So whatever we are eating is ferric. Whatever reaching in the blood is ferric. Only for absorption purpose it is converted into ferrous. So the ferric to ferrous converted into the stomach by HCl and ferrous to ferric again converted by the second transporter that is ferropotin, the basolateral transporter. So ultimately it is reached in the blood. Now in the blood iron cannot move alone. It requires a transporter. So what is the transporter of iron? The transporter of the iron is known as transferrin. On transferrin two, two molecules of iron will sit. On one molecule of transferrin, two, two molecules of iron will sit and it will carry the iron from everywhere in the body throughout the blood, right? You can say it is the vehicle of the iron. It is the scooter. It is the car of the iron. So iron is moving in the blood with the help of transferrin. T for transporter. Transferrin is transporter of iron. Please learn that. Now iron is required in the marrow, the bone marrow. So it will be carried to the bone marrow via transferrin. It is carried to the bone marrow. So whatever iron required in the bone marrow for hemoglobin synthesis, it will be taken by the normoblast present inside the bone marrow. They will take it and they will synthesize a hemoglobin out of that iron. Whatever extra iron is remaining after that, that will go to the liver. That will go to the liver and that extra iron will be stored in the liver in the form of ferritin. 
So it is the storage, it is the backup, it is the storage form of iron. So this is the summary, what we have learned from the entire summary. We have learned that the transporter of iron here, it is known as transferrin. The storage form of iron is ferritin, right? We have learned the iron is getting converted from ferric to ferrous for absorption and after absorption from ferrous to ferric again, right? We learned the two transporters, the DMT1, the ferroputin1, right? So this is the complete iron absorption. Now let's talk about the regulation of iron absorption. Sometimes what happens now if we eat too much iron in diet. So what will happen? All the iron will go and maximum iron will be accumulated in the liver in the form of the ferroputin. But liver do not require uh, ferritin. Ferritin, it's not ferroputin, it's ferritin. So uh, once the axis of ferritin is there in the liver, liver synthesizes a protein known as hapsidin. That hapsidin is synthesized by the liver that will come in the blood. Via blood, it will go to the ferroportin and inhibit and degrade the ferroportin. So this is the function of the hapsidin, hapsidin. So more is the hapsidin, it will cause more degradation of the ferroportin. So iron, now you, whatever iron you will take in diet, it will go inside but it will not absorb. It will not, it will be excreted in feces. So whenever iron excess is there, hapsidin will come in the role. Whenever iron depleted is there, so hapsidin will not come in the role. So the concentration of the hapsidin which is synthesized by the liver, it depends on the iron uh, that we are taking in the diet and the storage form of the iron. If there is more storage, more fer ferritin, hapsidin will be more. If there is less storage, it will be less. So this is the complete absorption and regulation of iron. I hope you got it. The same story is written in front of you. Now I guess if you read it, you will be able to understand it. So what I have written, please read it. Iron is taken in ferric form, it is in the diet. So ferric to ferrous conversion takes place by HCl, gastric acid. Once it gets converted, the DMT, the first transporter present on the lumen, it will transmit in, inside the cell. From the cell, there is another transporter known as ferroportin. Known as ferroportin, it will be taken by the ferroportin and go in the blood. In the blood, in the blood, in the blood, okay, during this uh, transport, again it will convert from ferrous to ferric. In the blood, it is having a transporter known as transferrin. Transferrin is the transporter. It will take it to the marrow and whatever extra is stored in the liver in the form of the ferritin. So transferrin is a transporter and ferritin is a storage. I guess everyone got it. Everyone got it. We have learned this diagram. The same story is shown here also. Now let me move ahead. We ha I have explained you the story of the hapsidin. Hapsidin is synthesized by the liver. So whenever inside the liver, there is more iron, more ferritin. So liver synthesize hapsidin. Hapsidin will go in the blood and from the blood it will go to the ferroportin and degrade the ferroportin. Once the ferroportin is degraded, iron cannot be absorbed now. Iron is lost in the feces, it will not be absorbed. So what we have learned, we have learned two things. Whenever the body have excess of iron, more hapsidin will be formed and less iron absorption. It will inhibit iron absorption. Whenever body have less iron store, imagine the situation, liver have less ferritin. So liver will not synthesize hapsidin, hapsidin will fall. And ferroportin again come in role, it will increase the iron absorption. So you can understand the relation of the hapsidin with the iron absorption. More is the hapsidin, less is the absorption. More is the hap uh, less is the hapsidin, more is the absorption. So basically I can say hapsidin is inversely proportional to absorption of iron. We have learned that. I guess everyone got it. Now let me teach you the factors affecting iron absorption. It's very, very, very important. What are the factors which affect iron absorption? So let me tell you the factors which increase iron absorption. As I have told you, iron absorbed in divalent state. So divalent state that is ferrous will increase iron absorption. Rather, trivalent or ferric will decrease it. Right? HCl, the acids, HCl, ascorbic acid, amino acid, all acids will increase. And all alkaline food will decrease. The alkaline food will decrease or a chlorhydria's absence of HCl, it will decrease, right? Uh, iron deficiency will increase, iron overload will, de will decrease. Here, hapsidin will come in role and take the charge, right? And apart from which you have to learn, the phytates, the tannates, they will form chelates with iron and decrease its absorption, right? So what we have learned, we have learned the transporter of iron is transferrin, T40, you will never forget now. And the storage form of iron is ferritin, ferritin convert into hemosidin also in the liver. Right. So that is the thing. Now let's let's come on iron deficiency anemia. What is the etiology of iron deficiency anemia? There can be four things. Either the person is taking less diet. Diet may come liya. So the person is eating less iron in the diet. Or the requirement is more. Or the blood loss is there. Or absorption is less. So they can be the four causes of iron deficiency anemia. In iron deficiency anemia, basically there are three stages. What are the three stages? The first thing there is storage iron depletion. The iron storage form of the iron is depleted. The second is iron deficient erythropoiesis. And the third is frank iron deficiency anemia. 
Now, what do you understand by that? Imagine a human being. Just suppose I am the person, I am the patient. I am not eating iron in my, in my diet from today. So, after, if I am not eating it from today and continue it, I am not eating, not eating. So, when I will have iron deficiency anemia? I will have iron deficiency anemia today only. Tomorrow, no. I am having a backup in my liver. In my liver, I am having the storage. I am having the name of the storage is paritin. So, if I am not taking the iron in diet, the hemoglobin is still synthesized. So, the bone marrow will obtain hemoglobin from the liver now obtain iron for the hemoglobin synthesis from the liver normally bone marrow obtain the iron for hemoglobin synthesis from the dietary iron but if dietary iron is absent the backup is present in the liver so the bone marrow will obtain the iron from the liver and continue synthesizing hemoglobin so that stage is known as storage iron depletion so the storage form of the iron go on depleting 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 one point will come when all ferritin is also depleted now neither diet is providing uh, uh, iron to the hemoglobin synthesis to the marrow nor it is present from the coming from the liver so basically the marrow is not getting iron for hemoglobin synthesis so in the marrow erythropoiesis will occur but it will be iron deficient erythropoiesis still patient don't have symptoms of anemia yeah the microcytic hypochromic rbcs are formed but still patient don't have symptoms after some time when the patient have frank symptoms of iron deficiency anemia it is known as frank iron deficiency anemia i hope you got the three stages so initially there is depletion of the storage iron right and then iron def deficient erythropoiesis and then frank iron deficiency anemia so in the first stage only serum ferritin is low so that's why we can say serum ferritin is the most sensitive and specific marker for iron deficiency anemia serum ferritin most sensitive and specific marker right remaining everything is normal remaining everything is normal in iron deficient erythropoiesis ferritin is still low but you transferrin saturation is also decreased, hemoglobin is also decreased, microcytic hypochromic RBCs are there. And in frank iron deficiency anemia, all the symptoms will come. So these are the three stages. Let me teach you the clinical features of iron deficiency anemia. So the patient have anemia, so patient will have non-specific symptoms like weakness, fatigue, dyspnea, palpitation, pallor. The most important is the pallor, right? Older patients may develop angina, congestive cardiac failure, CCF. There are some epithelial changes also. Most important in the nails, it's known as coilonychia. What do you mean by coilonychia? It's spoon-shaped nails. Can you see? Can you appreciate the shape of the nail here? Please appreciate the shape of the nail. It's coilonychia. Coilonychia, the spooning. It's known as spooning, right? At the angles of the mouth. Can you see the angles of the mouth? There is inflammation. It is known as angular chilosis. It's known as angular mouth. It's angular stomatitis or angular chilosis. The tongue, you can see it's atrophic. You can see this tongue is a normal tongue. Normal human being. See, it's shiny, right? It's pink, it's healthy. See, this is iron deficiency anemia. The tongue of a patient with iron deficiency anemia, it is atrophic. So, see the epithelial changes. The nails are showing coilonychia. The tongue is showing atrophy and there is angular stomatitis. Now, there is a something known as plumber wilson syndrome. It is having a triad. In the triad, one of the thing is iron deficiency anemia. Iron deficiency anemia is one of the type of the triad. Along with iron deficiency anemia, in the esophagus, the webs are formed. Now, if there are webs like ring-like structure, now this is an esophagus. Inside the esophagus, a ring-like webs are formed, so patient cannot swallow. It leads to dysphagia. So the third thing is dysphagia. So what is the triad of plumber wilson syndrome? Number one, iron deficiency anemia. Number two, esophageal webs and which leads to dysphagia. Please learn that. Since iron deficiency anemia is associated with the syndrome, that's why I have mentioned this syndrome here. Right. Uh, coming on the lab diagnosis. What is the lab diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia? We have to do three things. What three things we have to perform? The blood examination, the bone marrow examination and the biochemistry. Right. In the blood, I will show you this chart again. In the blood, we have to see all these things. Let me start with blood examination. Of course, the hemoglobin will fall. In all anemia, hemoglobin falls. So here also the hemoglobin will fall. Right. RBCs shows hypochromic, microcytic, anisocytosis, poikilocytosis, target cell and pessary cell. I will show you. Can you see this is a normal RBC? See the size and see, see the color. So basically hemoglobin is present at the peripheral two-third and the central one-third is empty. It is known as pallor, the central one-third. But see the RBCs in iron deficiency anemia. The first thing they are smaller in size as compared to normal. The size is less. So that's why known as microcytic. Right. The second thing the color is also less. The color is present only at the rim, periphery. So the pallor is area is increased. Here pallor is only one third. Here pallor is more than one third. So its color is less. That's why known as hypochromic. So size is less, color is less as compared to normal. So it's microcytic hypochromic anemia. 
right? So that is microcytic hypochromic anemia. You can understand the microcytic hypochromic anemia here. You can see all the RBCs, they are smaller than lymphocyte. We compare the size of the RBC on a peripheral smear with a small lymphocyte. So you can see all the RBCs are smaller than the lymphocyte and color is also less. You can see here target cells. Appreciate the target cells, right? In this slide, you can see all the RBCs are different size. Some are normal, some are smaller. So the size is different. That is known as N isocytosis that is known as an isocytosis right and you can see the shape is also different some are teardrop some are elongated some are circular so it is known as poikilocytosis poikilocytosis so there is an isocytosis cytosis and isocytosis as well as poikilocytosis along with target cells right so coming on the next point the retic count is slightly low mcv less mch less mchc less so all the three indices are less, but WBCs are normal and platelet are normal. There is no problem with WBC and platelet, right? So these are the blood findings. Coming on the bone marrow findings now, coming on the bone marrow findings. In the bone marrow findings, there is increased erythroid hyperplasia, right? To compensate, the bone marrow is compensating by doing erythroid hyperplasia. Now in ME ratio, the denominator is expanding. Because of erythroid hyperplasia, the numerator is same. So the ME ratio will decrease. Right, erythropoiesis, the micronormoblasts are there. You got my point. And there is cytoplasmic maturation lags behind the nuclear maturation. There is no problem in the nucleus, no problem in the DNA, so it will go on maturing. But in the cytoplasm, there is absence of hemoglobin synthesis. In the cytoplasm, hemoglobin cannot be synthesized because iron is absent. So basically, cytoplasmic maturation lags behind the nuclear maturation. And if you do the iron stain, Prussian blue, it's also deficient. The iron is less. You can see this is a normal normoblast inside the bone marrow and see the size of the blast normoblast here in iron deficiency anemia so this type of blast is known as microblast micronormoblast this is prussian stain this is a normal person see the prussian stain here and this is a person with iron deficiency anemia see the prussian stain here can you appreciate the blue dots here all the blue dots here is the storage iron and appreciate the blue dots here so it is reduced drastically it is reduced you can say it's drastically reduced Right, coming on the uh, biochemical findings. So in biochemical findings, the iron, of course, uh, the iron deficiency anemia, serum iron is low and serum ferritin is low. So iron is low and the storage of iron is also low, it is already depleted. So ferritin is the most sensitive and specific marker for iron deficiency anemia, it's the earliest marker, right? But TIBC, the capacity will be high and transferrin saturation is low, right? So you can understand here in this diagram, can you see these black color? These are the transporter, transferrin. I have told you on one transporter, two, two iron molecules are there. So here also we are having two, here also we are having two. So just suppose in human blood, we talk about percentage, we have 100 transporters. These 100 scooters or auto rickshaws are there. These are the transporters of iron. Out of 100, at a time only, only uh, 33 are saturated, 66 are empty. That The saturated one is known as transferrin saturation. And the empty one are known as TIBC. TIBC is the empty one, right? That is total iron binding capacity. It's not capacity or that is total binding iron capacity, right? So these are indicating TIBC because they are empty. And these are indicating the saturation. So we are having two things with us, the filled one and the empty one. The filled one are known as transferrin saturation and the empty one are known as TIBC. You got it? Now in iron deficiency anemia, what will happen? You only tell me. The filled one will reduce and the empty one will increase. Say yes or no. It's common sense. So that's why I have written the transferrin saturation is low. The filled one are low, but the empty one will increase. So TIBC increases in iron deficiency anemia. Please never forget. It's a very important concept. So can we revise? So this is the lab diagnosis. We are done with the lab diagnosis also. So can we revise here? So in the blood, the hemoglobin will be less. The RBCs are microcytic hypochromic. The retic count is slightly low. All the three indices, MCV, MCH, MCHC, they will reduce, reduce, reduce. WBC normal, platelet normal. We have seen this is the summary. In the bone marrow, the cellularity is increased. Basically, it's erythroid hyperplasia, so ME ratio is reversal. Erythropoiesis may, there is micronormoblast and marrow iron will be reduced. That is seen on Prussian blue or pearl stain. In the biochemistry, serum iron is less, the ferritin is less, TIBC is more, that is the empty one, empty uh, trans, uh, transferrin molecules and transferrin saturation is the filled transferrin molecules, they are reduced. So this is the summary of a case of iron deficiency anemia. You can get clinical questions based on the summary. 
you should know the normal value of everything and looking at the clinical question you can make it out what is increasing what is decreasing and you can make it out what type of anemia is it so coming on the differential diagnosis now what is the differential diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia so there are four uh, anemias which are microcytic hypochromic the mnemonic for them is sita s i t a this is the mnemonic s i t a s stands for sideroblastic anemia i stands for iron deficiency anemia that is topic right now t stands for thalassemia and a stands for anemia of chronic disease so these four are differential of each other basically right because they all are microcytic hypochromic anemia in all of them on the peripheral smear the rbcs are smaller with less color that's why microcytic hypochromic anemia they all are so the mnemonic is sita s i t a never never forget learn the full form they all are uh, differentials of each other so this is how we can differentiate the iron deficiency anemia with the other three right so we will be looking at this table once we will understand all four types of anemia what's the treatment of iron deficiency anemia uh, first treat the cause otherwise it will happen again and then correct the iron deficiency for for correction the therapy there are two type of therapies available the oral and the parenteral usually we prefer oral oral comes in the form of the tablets there are three type of tablets three type of formulation you can say ferrous sulfate ferrous fumarate and ferrous gluconate most common is ferrous sulfate which is available in the form of the tablets this is oral therapy in parenteral therapy we directly give iron iv iv right we are giving it directly iv but we do not give it usually there are certain indications when patient cannot take the oral when patient have malabsorption the patient cannot absorb post op case or uh, there is if we want a rapid replenishment in case of emergency right so here only one preparation is there iron dextron for iv only iron dextron is available for oral three preparations are there for iv only one preparation is there response to the therapy as soon as you will give the therapy either oral or iv the first thing happens is increase in reticulocyte so reticulocyte go on increasing it is showing that the patient is responding to the therapy so that's all about iron deficiency anemia i hope you have learned and understood the topic very well let me solve some mcqs based on this concept the first question is in front of you iron is absorbed iron absorption is decreased by all except this is all except the question is about the except so iron absorption is decreased by what it is decreased by calcium because it forms chelates it is decreased by tetracycline it forms chelates it is decreased by phytate it forms chelates but ascorbic acid is a acid we have learned that all acids including hcl hydrochloric acid amino acid they increase iron absorption so in the question except is there i will go with d the correct answer here is d right so the second question is in front of you which of the following glycoprotein is transported in iron metabolism i want to ask you transporter of iron t for t so the transporter of iron is a transparent right so that is the correct answer it's b you will never forget so the next question which of the following is the indicator of body iron storage i want to ask you the storage form of iron so we know the transporter of the iron is transparent but the storage form of the iron is trans uh, i'm sorry the storage form is ferritin it's wrongly spelling here it's ferritin ferritin the correct answer here is a it's ferritin right that's ferritin it should be f it's ferritin right the next question is in front of you what is the earliest sign of iron deficiency anemia the earliest sign of iron deficiency anemia is it increase in tibc is it decrease in serum ferritin is it decrease in iron or all of the above of course the most sensitive specific and earliest finding is ferritin so decrease in ferritin is the earliest also sensitive also specific also never forget so the correct answer here is b all three happen i agree but earliest is b you got my point the next question is in front of you which is the following is not seen in iron deficiency anemia so of course hypersegmented neutrophils are not seen in iron deficiency anemia they are seen in megaloblastic anemia so microcytosis precedes hypochromia it is correct mchc is less than 50% it's correct it is the most common anemia in india as well as world it's also correct but the first option is wrong so correct answer here is a the next question is in front of you iron deficiency anemia is characterized by so is it increased porphyrin is it increased mchc is it increased ferroportin or increased tibc so only thing which increases in iron deficiency anemia is tibc that is the empty non filled transparent molecules so i hope the correct answer here is d i hope you got it i hope you got it so that's all about iron deficiency anemia i have i, I think you have learned the topic well it's a very important topic uh, for competitive exams 
uh, please uh, listen if you have watched the lecture attentively try mcqs all mcqs based on this concept based on this topic i am sure that uh, you will be able to solve all of them thank you